All right. At this time, let's go to our contribution. And in our contribution this morning, I'd like to sh share to you, uh, read to you uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, in verse 12. You guys there? 1 Corinthians 12, in verse 12. This, this scripture talks about the church and how the church work together and function to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? So in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, says here, Just as a body, the one has many parts. So it is with Christ. We were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, vaccinated or not vaccinated. Amen. And we were all given to the one spirit to drink. It's in my Bible. Huh? <laughs> Just joking. You know, the, this, the church is described as a body. Our physical body. And uh, our physical body is amazing if you really look at it, how our body functions. Do you know that we have 78 organs in the human body? Do you know that we have 12 systems in our body? And these are 12 different systems. They function differently. You know, uh, we have the skeletal and muscular system, which are the bones and the muscles. The nervous and sensory system, which are our brain, our nerves, our eyes and ears. We have the endocrine system, the cardiovascular system, the lymphatic system, the respiratory system, the di digestive system, the reproductive system, the urinary system, and the integumentary system, which are our skin, our hair, and our nails. You know, these 12 systems function separately and they function simultaneously and they run automatically they're they're automatic and they seem to be independent from each other but you can take one from the other if you take one out of the system the whole body will be affected right you know like you know take out the urinary uni urinary system, your kidneys and bladder, and you don't pee anymore. So what's going to happen to your body? You will die. <laughs> you know, God designed our body perfectly well. It is interdependent of each other, and it's really amazing. Let's continue reading in verse 14. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not be, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Really amazing how God designed our bodies to work together. They function separately, but they are synchronized. Let's continue, continue reading in verse 21. It says, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the hand cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. Well, our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there will be no divisions in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And in verse 27 says, now you are 
the body of Christ. And each of you is a part of it. Amen? This is the description of the church. Our physical body. Like our bodies, we have many parts, but form one body. So is the church. We have different parts, different system, different functions, different roles, but form one body. Perhaps you are the eye. You are an eye. You have the foresight. You have the vision. You can see the present and the future. We need you in the church, amen? Perhaps you're the mouth and, or parts of the mouth, the tongue, the teeth, the gums that holds the, mouth, the, the, the teeth together, the larynx. You speak and we need you to function. We need you to synchronize so you can communicate well, amen? Perhaps you're the arms and the feet. We need you to work, to move, to carry things and to carry the body. Perhaps you're the bones, the muscles. Perhaps you're the brain, the nerves. We need your expertise, your sensory functions, your stability, your strength. We need your leadership. Amen? We need each other. We all need to function our roles well. If there's something wrong with one part, what do we do? We take care of that part. We need to supply what's needed in that part. We need to protect that part with medication and with special care. Because if one part suffers, every part will suffer with it. So we are part of each other. We may have different roles. We may have different tasks. Okay? We may have different functions. But we cannot be the same without each other. You know, we will not be 100% without one another because we are interdependent with one another. Amen? We need each other to function as one body. And, and this body is the church. And the church is very essential in Christianity. Do you know that the church is the marketing plan for the kingdom? The church is essential to advance the kingdom. Because the church is the kingdom of God here on earth. Amen? Also, our monetary contribution is the blood of the church. You know, they say marketing is the blood of the business or company. Without marketing, the business will die. Because, you know, of course, you need money to run a business, right? So it's also true with the church. We need money to run the church. Especially to... You know, to advance the church to different places where there is no church yet. So while of us, while, you know, we play our distinct important roles in the church, maybe some of us are the skin and the hair and the nails. You're very important because imagine you don't have nails. How do you feel? How would you feel? <laughs> you know, some of you, maybe the eyes and the ears and the internal organs and, or the cells that's supporting the ligaments for our bodies. We need to function in our roles in the church, but all of us need to give as well to support the church financially. Amen? We function differently and separately sometimes, but we have one function that is common to all of us, and that is to give. We are all called to supply monetarily to the church so that the church can continue to do its purpose. And that is to make disciples. And that is to become the light of this world. And that is to advance the gospel of Christ. So I'm asking everyone to give with all of your heart. Amen. Let's sacrifice to give for the church so that the church can do more. Also, our special contribution is upcoming. So are you guys excited for that? And how are you in your special missions contribution goal? How are you setting yourself for victory to smash your goal? You know, for me, I know I'm good, okay? I, I won't have a problem with that, you know, because I know I will hit and smash my special contribution. And for me, that's a big amount. You know, I know I am good because I plan it since the start of the year. 
I give certain amount weekly. And I know I can give more because I plan it well. So I hope that we have the same convictions here in the church. Amen. You know, we, we got to prepare for special missions contribution. And we're doing this yearly. So let's prepare this every year, especially every start of the year. Amen. Because it's fun to be giving to God. It's fun to be in the church giving and supporting the work of the church. And it's surely it's more fun to be in the kingdom. Amen. So let's go to God in prayer as we go to our contribution. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven.